Bueno, pues bienvenidos y bienvenidas a todo el mundo al, al tercer día de las jornadas profesionales de Monkey Week, Monkey Week Pro, antes conocida como Monkey Game. Eh, vamos a empezar el día con una charla con Andy Cooper de Yamaha que nos va a explicar cómo hacer un live streaming desde casa. Esta charla forma parte de las charlas dentro del proyecto Ines, así que va a ser en inglés. So we will switch to English right away and I will say hello to Andy. Hello, thanks for joining us. I was, I was saying initially that uh, you're going to explain the best practice and how to do a live stream from home. So I will hand it to you so you can do your presentation and I will come back uh, in maybe 50 minutes, 45 minutes. If there are any questions from the public who's watching on YouTube, you can post your questions on the YouTube chat and we will then transmit to Andy. Andy, all yours. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Buenos dias. Thank you for, for joining me. Uh, so, yes, my name is Andy. I've been working at Yamaha for uh, 20 years. I've had a great, a great time with Yamaha so far. I spend most of my time uh, training people how to use giant mixing desks like this one behind me. But uh, as a hobby, I make a lot of music at home. Um, I play concerts at weekends. And recently, I've been doing some live streaming. So I want to give you some tips as a musician and as a sound engineer. So what are we trying to do uh, today? Let me show you the presentation I have. So I am going to share my screen. Um, then hopefully you'll still see me in the little corner of the uh of the stream there so what are we trying to do we're trying to let the audience experience your sound so you can hopefully gain understanding gain respect and gain followers and how can i help you today with achieving this well i will talk about what equipment do you need how can you prepare your room and what is the best practice to get a good sound to your listeners? Uh, I'll give you some tips, some examples, and there should be time for Q and A at the end. So yeah, please type your questions into the comments as we go. How do we start? Let's start with an equipment list. First, of course, we need a device with an internet connection, maybe a computer, an iPad or iPhone, and then you need the internet connection. And really, it should be over five megabits per second for your uplink to the outside world. That would be okay for standard definition video, like 720. If you want to go up, uh, 720 or 1080p, then you're going to need over 7 megabits per second. If you want to stream 4K, then you're going to need at least 25 megabits per second. So that is a lot more demanding. Probably many of us can't manage streaming 4K from our homes. Next, of course, you're going to need a webcam or some camera equipment. You're going to need microphones, which should be external from the device. I'll explain why in a minute. Then you need some earphones or headphones or powered speakers, <laughs> something to hear yourself, hear the audience. And then you need a mixer and cables to get everything connected together, of course. So let's talk about microphones. Without them, no one's going to hear you. So, yes, most devices have a built-in microphone, don't they? Laptop computers, iPads, iPhones, they all have mics inside, but they're not such great quality normally. And they're normally optimized for speech. So if you want to play music through them with more high and low frequencies, you might not hear them so well. <laughs> for example, if you ever tried recording a bass guitar 
with a phone mic. Doesn't work so well. Um, also, the problem is with positioning. So you're going to position your webcam uh, in the best position for the picture, which means the microphone of the device is going to be too far away from your voice. So it's going to pick up a lot of sound from the room, a lot of echo and, and noise. Or if you're typing on a keyboard, it'll pick up the sound of the keyboard, won't it? So you want to take the microphone uh, cl as close as you can to your voice or instrument. So an external microphone will be better. And also then you can choose a microphone that's more suited to uh, the voice or the instrument that you've got, depending on the frequency range of the instrument and how loud it's going to get. So how do you choose which microphone you're going to use? There are so many different types of microphone on there. Well, you could use uh, this type of microphone, a headset microphone, which brings the microphone very close to your mouth so you get really clear sound. Uh, so that's very useful, but uh, perhaps if you're singing, it might uh, get a little overpowering or, or uh, pick up too much of your breath noise. You could have a lavalier type or clip type, you know, that, that clips on here. That's quite discreet for filming, isn't it? You, you might not see it on the video, um, but only use this if you are wearing head, headphones or earphones. These type of microphones do not mix well with loudspeakers, uh, especially if the loudspeakers are pointing at you, which means they're pointing at the microphone. That would be a recipe for bad noise. So another type of mic is a handheld dynamic or condenser mic on a stand, perhaps rather like uh, this one here which I use for, for singing. It's obviously versatile for voice and music. You can point it at the instrument, point it at your mouth to get a good sound. You know, 100 to 200 euros will get you something quite, distant, di uh, quite decent. 300 or more euros will get you something quite professional. So um, yeah, it's worth taking time to consider which kind of mic you need. If you really don't know how to choose the right microphone, then um, uh, there's a page on Yamaha's website which will help you. Uh, if you go to the TF series, you, you could just do a, do a web search for Yamaha TF uh, series mixers. They have a lot of presets inside them where um, the, the channel settings are made to match certain microphone types. So there's a good list of different microphones for different purposes that you can look at to help you choose a uh, microphone for voice or for drums or for acoustic guitars, saxophones, trumpets, violins, and so on. Uh, that's quite a good list to help you choose. And that helped me to choose uh, um, what I use. So yes, I have the, the Shure Beta 87A for singing. And when I'm playing a saxophone, I use a Pro 35 mic, which clips on to the bell. Uh, we saw a quick picture of it just there in the middle of the screen. So once you've chosen your microphone or microphones, if you've got uh, several instruments, then you should choose uh, whether you're going to use headphones or speakers. Maybe you need to hear backing tracks to play along with. Maybe you need to monitor your own sound, or if there's several of you playing together, you need to be able to hear each other. Maybe you need to be able to hear your virtual audience, um, if, if they're gonna be clapping or cheering or, or talking or asking you questions. So consider how you want to hear them, maybe with speakers on your, your desktop or uh, headphones or earphones. So uh, when I'm at home, I use uh, the speakers shown here, the Yamaha HS5 ones. Um, as you can see right now, I'm using molded in ear buds. So um, that blocks out other sound from outside. So it helps me to hear directly. Clearly, you, you see a lot of musicians wearing them, don't you, when they're performing. Uh, so how do you choose? Yes, earbuds are, are, are discreet. They, uh, they, 
they maybe are not even obvious at all. Um, you could wear headphones, so um, like this, for example, I, I often wear these uh, when I'm recording in a studio because they have a, 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 a bigger sound. But if you're going to wear them, then uh, they're going to get uncomfortable after a, a long time and uh, <laughs> uh, they might not be suitable for wearing while you're playing an instrument. Uh, then if you're going to use a speaker, then you've got to be aware that you could get audio feedback. If the microphone picks up the sound of the speaker, it's going to howl and squeal and cause uncomfortable noise. So to avoid that, it is best to use headphones or earphones. You know, ne never point a microphone at a speaker because it's going to pick up the sound and make noise. So that's why it's good to use uh, what we call a directional microphone or cardioid. You know, they, they pick up more sound at the front, less sound at the back. So if you have a microphone like that with the speaker coming this way, the sound is coming at the less sensitive part of the microphone. And the more sensitive part of the mic is pointing at the voice or the instrument. It's going to help it work a lot better. By the way, I guess you've seen a lot of performers holding a microphone like that when, when they perform. Sometimes it helps uh, a, a singer to, to get a certain kind of sound if they're beatboxing, for example. Otherwise, it's bad news for sound engineers because it turns your microphone from a directional one into an omnidirectional microphone. That means it picks up sound all around. If you do that, it destroys the pickup pattern of the mic and it will pick up more sound from behind and it will cause more feedback, more noise. So if you want to get good sound, never do that. <laughs> it will make the sound worse. Uh, though, unless you specifically want to beatbox, for example. So next, we've got microphones, we've got headphones. Now, perhaps we need a mixer, perhaps not, it depends. If you've got two people, then you need two microphones and you need a mixer to merge the sound of them together. If you've got a voice and a backing track, you need a mixer to merge them together. If you've got a voice and an instrument, it depends. So maybe the acoustic instrument can use the same microphone as your voice. So one microphone might do it all, perhaps if you're playing violin or, or flute, the instrument is quite near uh, your mouth. So one mic might be enough, so you may not need a mixer. But if you play an electric or electronic instrument uh, that doesn't create much acoustic sound, then of course you need a mixer to combine the acoustic sound from uh, your voice to the microphone and the electronic sound from your keyboard or electric guitar, for example. So, how do you choose a mixer? Well, probably you want it to be small and portable so you can carry it uh, from room to room or house to house. Um, you want it to be able to work with your tablet or smartphone, perhaps, uh, if you're going to use them for your uh, streaming. So maybe you want it to be battery powered um, or you want it to be powered from the USB connection to your computer, for example. Uh, probably you want it to be easy to set up and you need one or two microphones, perhaps with phantom power or the plus 48 volt. Some microphones need that to operate. And then you want an input for guitar or a keyboard, maybe a backing track input as well. And then you need sockets for your headphones or powered speakers. So there's our list of requirements and I'll show you in a minute what I am using right now and what I always use for my little live streams from home. But first uh, we got a few more things to sort out before we are ready to broadcast to the outside world. If you look around behind me, well I'm actually not at home right now, I'm in my studio in Yamaha's offices and you can see I have a lot of soundproofing gear um, 
yeah maybe if i just stop sharing then you get the big picture again so you, yeah you can see behind me into the side i've got some big uh sound improvement panels to stop so much echo in this room so probably you can't have such enormous things at home so what can you do well you can use um the the equipment you have around you basically let me share my screen again and uh, you can use things like curtains carpets and cushions to uh, improve the sound in the room you know close the curtains so you don't get sound reflections off the windows uh, have plenty of cushions and carpets and soft things around to deaden the sound um uh and of course, keep your microphones away from your loudspeakers. So that helps you to sound good in the first place. If you've got a good sounding room, then the microphone is going to have a much easier job of getting a good sound out of your voice or instrument. Uh, next, don't just think about your sound, but think about the picture as well so you can improve how you look to everyone watching just with a couple of lights even just one light see this picture of a light here <laughs> a selfie light you can put your phone in the middle of that so i've got one of those shining on me now and i have another light on my other side as well to brighten up my face i mean it's a quite a bright room already but still because all the lights are above, you get a lot of shadow on you. So if you want your face to be seen, then people will, will see your expression better and connect better with you. So you want lights coming towards your face. Now, if you're wearing glasses like I have to these days for a reading, then be careful about reflections as well. Because um, the if you have a light right in front of you, it can reflect in your glasses and back to the camera, which can be a little uncomfortable for those watching. Let me stop sharing again so you can see my uh, video a bit better. So if I sort of do that, look up and move around, maybe you can start to see a reflection in my glasses. So you want to kind of avoid that. So raise the lights up a bit more and point them down to you. Or have the lights lower, pointing up towards your face don't have them pointing straight at your eyes because they will reflect or they will be uncomfortable for your eyes have them kind of higher coming down or lower coming up just so you can tell what these lights are doing i'm going to switch them off and then you will you will uh, hopefully see the difference so that light is off now and this light it, uh, i need to dim and go off now hopefully you can see that's somewhat darker that one is on again and off and on and now this one i'm going to switch on again it has a dimmer control so we can make it uh, a bit brighter like that hopefully now you can see a little bit clearer my face without reflections in my glasses so a nice little tip uh, not quite audio related, but hopefully very useful. Right, let's get back to sharing my screen. There we are. And so <clears throat> here's the equipment I use. Uh, I have a Yamaha AG06 mixer, this little, little white one here. Uh, various microphones, earphones, and then I can use this mixer with my iPhone, an iPad, or right now with my MacBook Pro. So why do I use this mixer? Well, it's perfect for the amount of equipment I want to connect. So it has two microphone inputs. So this mic I'm speaking through now is in input one. Then it's got instrument inputs. I have a guitar plugged into input two. Uh, input two could take a microphone or a guitar. Then I've got stereo inputs and I have my keyboard connected to that. Then I have additional inputs for, for um, music player, for example. Uh, and then 
I have an aux input for playing something you know, with a with a headphone cable going in, and I have small and large headphone connections. I have connections for uh, speakers as well, and uh, and I can connect it to a PA system if I want to do a small performance in a public venue with this mixer as well. And it's powered by USB, USB cable from the back to the computer. So it's small, but it's powerful. And um, I'll show you more a bit later. It's got some very nice hidden features. But for now, this is how I connect. So microphone into number one, instrument into number two, backing track into those phono connectors, and then headphone connector there as well. So let me practice what I preach and let me show you what uh, what is going on. So if I pick up my mixer, drag the cables, then uh, you can see that's where it is. That's how I've got everything connected there. And let me demonstrate a little. And now you will see why I am not a professional musician. <laughs> I am a sound engineer. <laughs> musician music is just my hobby but i want to show you how how good this is is working so here is a piano sound so that should be coming through nice and clear to you i hope let's get another sound here and uh, using the sustain pedal i can hold a key uh, hold a chord And I'm going to pick up my guitar. So it's a Yamaha Revstar, and here we go. Gives you a little little idea. So the guitar by itself. There we are. So now you can see and hear just what you can do or what you can play back through that little mixer. And that guitar is coming directly into the mixer. No effects. It's only going through a little tuner pedal. Right, let me show you some more features of the mixer. I shall share the screen again. Here we are. And if we zoom in on it, it's got a, a clever little switch in the middle, which is uh, uh, the two PC mode. So input mix mode. And that determines what signal travels through the USB cable to the computer. So you can choose dry one to two, and then you will use that for recording um, two channels at a time. So I can record voice and guitar at the same time onto separate tracks of, uh, of computer audio software. Right now though, I'm using input mix mode and that mixes all the inputs together. So it mixes the, the, the microphone, the guitar, the keyboard and the, uh, the backing track inputs, mix them together with volume levels and send them out. So that's what I'm using now to get all my, my music, oops, I will get all my music over to you. Uh, there's another mode called loop back as well, um, which I'll come to in a second. But um, one other good thing about this, this mode now, input mix mode is I can play sounds on my computer, which will come through the mixer, and I will be able to hear them, but you won't. So that could be useful if I want to play to a click track, or uh, if I want to have some kind of backing for, to help me play, but I don't want you to hear it, then I can do this, do that in the input mix mode. Uh, so that, that can be very handy. But then this next mode, loop back mode, that's a very interesting mode, very useful. That means I can play audio from the computer and it will be looped back so you, the audience, will be able to hear it as well. 
Now I have to be very careful when using loopback uh, with Zoom because it will send all, all the uh, audio that's sent to me through Zoom, it will send it back. So everyone else will hear themselves with a bit of an echo. So um, ev everyone else in that situation, in a kind of web conference, they would need to mute their microphones um, so they, they don't hear so many um, echoes from them. But loopback will allow me to place uh, something from my computer to you. So I'm going to switch to loopback mode now. You might just hear a little click when I do that. And then, then um, I am going to show you um, my Nuendo project here. So I can share that. And then I can play you a little bit of this, which is something I was working on a, a few weeks ago uh, at home. So there. So you can see the vocal tracks there and then uh, yeah, 80s synth kind of sounds, uh, bass there, pads, uh, lead synth, bells, and then uh, some of the tracks I, I decided not to use there. So um, and then stop. So I can send this back to you loud and clear using loopback. So I'm going to switch back to input mix mode now, so so that <laughs> we're not going to possibly get some um, some uh, harsh sound uh, from the other guys on Zoom now. So that gives you a great idea of what you can do with loopback. Let me go back to my slideshow, and another thing I can do with this mixer, I can add reverb to my voice. So. Right now, it probably sounds like I'm talking from quite a dry sounding room. You're not really hearing any echo at all, which is not not great for singing, is it? You want a more reverberant sound for singing. So I can do that. Here is some reverb. So um, not a huge reverb, maybe the sound of reverb from a small hall or small church. You can add that when you're singing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And then switch it off when you're talking. And then switch it on again for singing. And switch it off again when you're talking in between songs. Forgive my voice there. I'm not a trained singer. Uh, but at least I can demonstrate that feature there. And yes, I had a little bit of reverb on the guitar as well when I played it. So nice to have those little features in there. Also, you get this amp simulate button as well, which I was using. So that enables you to get some um, distorted or overdriven sound for your guitar. Uh, without needing any effects pedals or anything uh, at all before. So I was just having some gentle overdrive when I played a guitar earlier, but a little bit later, if there's time, I can demonstrate uh, more uh, heavier sounds to you if, if, uh, if there's a chance. So let me talk through some more settings uh, to be aware of. Back to plus 48 volt or phantom power. Some microphones need them. This microphone needs it. It's a condenser microphone. Uh, this microphone needs it. It's a condenser microphone. Uh, dynamic mics like your traditional Shure SM58, for example, doesn't need it, but some do. So how to adjust your levels? Well, turn up the gain while you're speaking. The gain is the top left knob there. Turn it up while you're speaking, um, but avoid the peak light um, lighting up continuously. If it lights rarely, only when you're speaking loudly, that's okay. Or if it doesn't light up at all, then that's, that's also fine. And then turn up the volume level um, so that everything can be heard. You have red peak lights near the on off button on the middle on the right as well so you want to avoid those going red though if they do slightly flash red during the loudest parts of your performance that's okay they are an early warning rather than a severe uh, 
rather than saying you're absolutely too loud it's just warning you saying you're you're approaching uh you're approaching the maximum level so you also have pad switches for your inputs if you need to reduce the level so for the guitar inputs uh, you have a pad and then for the line inputs from keyboard or or uh, backing track player you have gain buttons for high or low gain so uh, it will suit pretty much any kind of input so you adjust your volumes along along the bottom is all your volume controls and your listening level is in that dark box on the right if um if you don't need so many inputs maybe you are always performing just by yourself just you and your guitar or just you and your keyboard then you could get away with this little smaller uh, mixer the ag03 and this has the added advantage of a fader control for your microphone level too so you could use this as a slightly lower cost alternative you can still connect a backing track you can still connect a guitar or a keyboard but not both guitar and keyboard at the same time it's one or the other and it takes just one microphone input as well so that's it, its limitation if you want more channels then this mixer will give you more channels and still give you the same functionality with the USB uh, connection to computer or iPad or iPhone and it has reverb built in as well uh, this gives you a bit more control of your inputs you can see the green knobs there give you EQ control and you also have a couple of compressors on the first two inputs so this will give you up to four microphones plus uh, three more instruments so this will handle pretty much a full band maybe you've got a digital drum kit you could connect keyboards you can connect uh, a couple of guitars maybe a saxophone and a singer uh, for example or a few backing vocalists uh, so uh, yeah this is nice and easy to use with the hands-on controls though the AG06 is smaller with less knobs on it but it's actually more sophisticated you get software with it uh, here is a picture of it AG DSP controller this gives you advanced control of the features that you don't get on the front panel of the mixer so this is controlled from a computer with the USB connection and you get a compressor and a, and a EQ on uh, input one and two and you get your guitar amp simulator uh, down the bottom and on the right side you get your effect presets as well so you can choose different types of reverb or delay and you can tweak the sound to suit your requirements the great thing about this is you can get someone who knows what they're doing to set it up for you and then save it and uh, um, so if if you're confident at performing but not confident with the sound engineer facilities then get a sound engineer to set it up for you and then save it and all you need to do is use the buttons on the mixer to switch it on or off when you want it or not so that is uh, the good thing and the the little ag03 by the way this little one this has the amp simulator on it as well it just doesn't have the button on the surface so if you want to overdrive your guitar then you need to have the software running at that time to switch that on or off okay good stuff right let's mm, yes let's move on once you're connected to your computer and you want to prepare for audio in and out uh, for streaming then it's very simple with uh, this range of mixers um, it will be discovered automatically by Apple computers and uh, you select the AG06 or AG03 for input and output on a Windows computer um, many computers will detect it automatically otherwise you can download the driver for it from Yamaha's website uh, easy to find with a web search and if you want to use it with an iPad or even with an iPhone um, and it 
it doesn't work with other types of phone it only works with apple right now but you can use the camera connection kit so um in this case i've got the lightning to usb connector there and then a usb cable and then it needs a power supply as well to to keep power for that um connection cable and the power um well let me show you in the next slide you can power the mixer from a battery exactly the kind of battery you charge your phone with when you're walking around you can use to power the mixer and that will power the camera connection kit as well so that there on the screen is all you need to um, get a good sound when you're using your your iphone or, or ipad as your streaming device so if you want to record a little video or of you making music then this is a great tool to use i've done that quite a lot uh, you can easily put that in a shoulder bag carry it around from place to place as you go now the next step uh, using software tips for getting good sound uh, for your software by the way a uh, quick reminder feel free to type questions into the youtube chat i can't see it right now but uh, i believe the questions will be read out to me in a little while and i'll be able to answer as many as we have time for so feel free to ask anything about uh, this topic we're talking about so uh if you're using zoom like uh, i am now to to reach the monkey week team in spain uh because i am in the uk uh in a town called milden Keynes. then if you're using zoom zoom is is has great audio features and it's being updated every few months so you know since the beginning of this year there's been quite a few good updates enabling you to get better and better sound so um uh they are really doing a good job for keeping us all communicating so here are some of the features you can have so you can see you can suppress the background noise um, you can choose like low medium or high best to choose low if you want music otherwise zoom might think that the music you're making is noise and will try to silence it <laughs> obviously you don't want that to happen do you um, and then it has some advanced options as well so if you click advanced then you get this next window here where you can choose um, to enable original sound which will then bypass the echo cancelling uh, algorithms of zoom and give you the natural sound you've got coming from your microphones just a warning only do this if you're using uh, headphones or, or earphones don't do that if you're using speakers okay because if you're using speakers you will get some echo and you will want it cancelling but if you're using earphones or headphones then you can turn on original sound and get a much better sound coming through so that's what i've done now so uh hopefully you're hearing all the music i've played nice and clearly so you can choose hi-fi music mode you can even choose stereo audio mode it uses more processing power a bit more bandwidth but you can do that um, so all your listeners can benefit so if you're using zoom to do sort of a subscribed uh, concert or a concert to known friends fans family then these are good settings to make so yeah the background noise algorithms they will think maybe that someone hitting drums is actually someone banging a hammer against a nail on a wall and it will try to remove it or if you're if you're playing pad sounds on your keyboard it might think it's uh, traffic noise or rain noise or something and will try to to uh try to remove it so you kind of need to tell zoom yeah I'm making music don't disturb me <laughs> okay but probably you're going to be streaming on other platforms if you just want to reach the wide world you may want to stream on Facebook uh, which you can though um, you need to choose your browser carefully because uh, 
uh, the Safari browser on my computer at least won't let me use my built-in webcam so you have to use uh, Google Chrome or some other browser to use your built-in webcam just so you know um, so one uh, question I'm often asked is how do you know your audio is at a good level and is not overloading well the problem is the algorithms for the audio in things like Facebook and YouTube are invisible they're hidden they are unknown so you you don't know if your levels are great or not until you give it a try so thankfully you can stream to Facebook and make it private so only you can see it so I recommend you do that a couple of times and experiment with the volume levels to get uh, a, a, a good sound so experiment a few times try it out see what sounds best because always um, there's going to be some compression, some reduction in dynamic range. So uh, give it a try before you go more widely public. And the same for YouTube as well. You can uh, you can live stream privately. So you can lock it so only you or only a, a few people can see it. Um, so you can run a test, listen back, watch back to it is it too loud is it distorted is it too quiet you can check these things and then you can delete it try again before you go public um so that is is really the best way there's there's no there's no sort of clear do it like this or do it like that way but i would say on on this ag06 mixer um where you see um the output volume levels let me go back to a picture that has it um, just here you see the lights um, towards the top right of the, of the little picture there peak light and signal light if the signal light is green um, but the peak light is off then that's generally a pretty good level range to be in so you want the signal light on while you're playing or singing but you don't want the peak light to come on uh, that that should pretty much guarantee you're in the right ballpark for broadcasting your sound so um, nearly nearly finished nearly finished so what if what I've told you is not enough do you want to find out more or do you need more if you need more channels and more hands-on controls then there are bigger mixers available if you look through the mg xu range of mixers and here's a web link uh, you can go to to find more information about bigger mixers if you have a bigger music group that you want to live stream with if you want more information more instructions then again um, the website here yamaha.com slash two slash mgxu that slash two there that that takes you to a place that allows you to choose your language and choose uh, the country you're from and then it takes you to the right page you can find more information more details uh, kind of written guides on how to get uh, internet broadcasting or how to use the the device as an audio interface to your computer if you want other more resources then uh, you can go to the, the Yamaha global YouTube channel uh, later and you can have a look for instructional videos and stuff uh, you might even come across me uh, there sorry to say if you want more software features then uh, Cubase is a great tool to use you'd have seen me using that earlier uh, that will give you a lot of lovely production features for use at home if you want to make your own bagging tracks that's great and if you want to connect for remote recording then uh, Steinberg has this VST connect and transit thing that will allow you to uh, record someone who's who's far away record them uh, so you can do a collaborative production even though people are in different homes in different towns far away uh, so I hope that gives you a really good idea um, that's pretty much the end of my presentation so shall we see what questions we've had available I'll stop sharing my screen um, and then let's let's check is there is there anything uh, anything we can help thanks Andy it's, it's been a great presentation very clear very 
uh, very thorough. There's uh, one comment first. There's uh, one person saying that thank you so much for the tips about live streaming on Zoom and Facebook because they didn't know that could uh, that was an alternative, especially for those tips that they didn't know about. So thanks for that. And there's one question about uh, I, th I guess it's personally for you uh, uh, when you live stream. It's what platform do you use when you live stream? And if you have experienced any setbacks with YouTube or any other platform when they may have blocked your screen, even if you were playing your own music, do you have any tips for that? Right, good questions. So I've mostly used Zoom for kind of private um, streaming sessions or closed streaming sessions. I have done uh, several things directly to YouTube, actually with a local church in uh, the town where I live. Um, yeah, there have been a couple of problems. We've we've never had we've never had a live stream kind of kind of stopped or blocked. Um, but I have heard of others having that risk. Yeah, possibly uh, YouTube has kind of continuously searching algorithms to check if if there's copyright music being played yeah. uh, without a license um now most churches will pay license pay for licensing uh for for, for doing that because they want to play songs that people know and can sing along to hasn't been that problem and i i don't really have a suggestion for how to avoid that problem uh, apart from make sure your music is completely unique which might might not be such a helpful uh, suggestion <laughs> really, really um so yeah you you do always have to be aware of that um while broadcasting on youtube it might sometimes think you're playing something by someone else and then try uh, and stop it it is always a risk using a public open platform that mm. is of course, used by many, many record companies who who want to make money out of their streams. So, uh, so they put pressure on YouTube to to stop uh, piracy. So it's always a fight. So yeah, you're always safer using a platform like Zoom, uh, which is a little more more private um, and not prone to being stopped by mm -hmm. by the internet police. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think that was the the question we got. Uh, we got a lot of props and, and uh, thank yous, but not uh, any other questions. I guess your presentation was so thorough that it, it uh, responds itself somehow, and mm. it gave a lot of resources to to check as well. Great. So I guess. Uh, this is uh, the end of our presentation in this panel with Yamaha, with Andy Cooper. Thank you so much for being here and starting our third day at Monkey Week. And You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. I hope we can hope see you in person week. in Sevilla one day. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. I hope the rest of the week goes well in the Thank meantime. You. Thank you very yeah. much, Andy. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.